Hey, so can you tell us exactly what is happening with this Nova, the Blaze Star? What happens from a, from a kind of a chemical reaction or a scientific perspective? Yeah, so this is a really exciting event. Um, it's rare. Uh, and this one goes off about every 80 years. So we're expecting it soon. What happens is the material from this uh, the star that's the companion of this white dwarf, the material is falling on around the white dwarf. It hits a point where it passes a threshold and kicks off a nuclear explosion. This is really bright. And so we can see it from a distance. So suddenly a star that we hadn't wouldn't have seen with our eye before is going to become bright enough um, to be as bright as Orion's belt. So it should be really amazing. So you'll be able to see this with the naked eye, will you? You will, just for a few days. It starts out, it's going to get very bright for a few days, as bright as Polaris, the stars in Orion's belt, and then it's going to fade away over the next few days. So you kind of have to catch it while it's bright. Okay, you got to catch it where it's bright. Where are the best viewing points around the world? Can Australian scientists and stargazers uh, be treated by this or we, are we in the wrong part of the world? So this might be a little bit hard for Australians um, because it's in the Northern Crown. Um, so Corona Borealis um, is, uh, is somewhat in the north, so maybe from the northern parts of the country you might get a glimpse, uh, but it might be a little difficult from there. But watch out because there are going to be some great images from telescopes around the world that are also looking at this object. Well, let's talk about the telescopes. You're the project scientist for NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope, which will be used to observe the eruption when it's detected. What is that going to look like for you and just how exciting is it for you given that your project lead on this equipment that will be uh, recording, I imagine, this event. This is the kind of thing that we built our telescope to do. Uh, we don't know where or when it's going to happen, but we're making a survey of the whole sky every three hours. So when this goes off, mm -hmm. we'll know within hours uh, that something new is in the sky and we'll immediately be studying the data to see how bright does it get? How long does the flare last? We expect it to see it in gamma rays, you know, I said days by naked eye. But for the gamma rays, we should see it over months and get to really study how this explosion is expanding out into space. So I'm really excited to see how that happens. What do you hope can be learned from studying these recurring stars, these, these nova explosions? One of the big questions we have about these white dwarf stars is they're gaining this mass and then blowing some off. But over time, they get heavier. We would really like to understand that because this is a nova, um, which is different from a supernova. Um, but it might turn into a supernova someday down the road. Um, and we would really like to understand how stars get from being white dwarfs that go nova into becoming supernovae, which are some of the brightest events in the universe. And that is a supernova, and excuse my ignorance if, if this isn't correct, that is the explosive death of a star, is it not? Yeah, and so the difference between a nova and a supernova is the nova just blows off some outer material from the star, the star remains. In the case of the supernova, it destroys the star and all of that energy goes out around into the space and kind of seeds new star formation and we get to see it from very long distances. You mentioned, Liz, that you, this sort of event happens every 80 years or so, so it is a once-in-a-generation event. Do you expect that this will fuel uh, the next generation of, of scientists? You know, what is going to be so special about this event? One of the, my favorite things that I learned about astronomy is that the stars are not fixed. There are things that change all of the time. It's very dynamic, very exciting. So I hope that this get, reaches a lot of folks who realize like, oh, you know, we really can watch what's happening in the universe around us and learn from it. I think we will see new astronomers come out of this event. Okay. And it, but if you had a telescope in Australia, will it be possible to see it? Um, so, yeah, I think it depends on just how close you can view to the horizon. So yeah. definitely check with your star guides and see if it's something that comes over the horizon for you. Yeah, and check out what comes out of NASA, I'm sure. Dr Elizabeth Hayes, uh, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you.